guys, good afternoon. This afternoon, we will discuss about the Renaissance period. But before anything else, we would like to introduce ourselves. So, I am Nen Rodis Mahen. I'm Matthew Carcas. I'm Michael Dane Revis Mane. And we are the Wokohan Jones. French word which means rebirth, a European civilization immediately following the Middle Ages. The Renaissance is often said to be the start of the modern age. The Renaissance witnessed the discovery and exploration of new continents. It was divided into three periods, early Renaissance, high Renaissance, and late Renaissance, which is also called the Mannerist period. The substitution of the Copernican for the Ptolemaic system of astronomy. The invention or application of such potential innovation such as paper, printer, mariner's compass, and gunpowder. The decline of the feudal system and the growth of the commerce. Primarily a time of revival of classical learning and wisdom after a long period of cultural decline and stagnation. Renaissance refers to the rebirth of humanism in 14th, 15th, and 16th century in Europe. New discoveries in fine arts, literature, philosophy, science and technology, architecture, religion, and spirituality. Rather than Example is this, this, and this. Secularism. Fewer church paintings. For example, this and this. Classicism. Classic Roman and Greek influence. Example is this, this, and this. Nature depicted the outdoor. Example is this this, and this. Anatomy. Focused on defined and precise anatomy. Example is this, this, and this. Linear perspective. The appearance of things related to each other. Example is this, this, and this. Realism. Artistic representation that aims for visual accuracy. Example is this, this, and this. Depth. Use slide and creates background. Example is this, this, and this. Symmetry. Balance. Proportion. Example is this, this, and this. What they call Renaissance period. And right behind me is Leonardo da Vinci. Who is Leonardo da Vinci? Leonardo da Vinci is a painter, a sculptor, an inventor, an architect, a military engineer, and a draftsman. The epitome of Renaissance man. His ideas and bodies of work had influenced a countless artists and made da Vinci a leading light of the Italian Renaissance. And let us look some of his artworks. So guys, the first painting that I'm going to show you is the Vitruvian Man. The Vitruvian Man is made of ink. The medium that Leonardo da Vinci used is ink. So the Vitruvian Man explains the proportion of a human body according to Vitruvius. Let's go, let's look for the second painting. The second painting is Salvador Monde. Salvador Monde is the savior of the world. And the painting was made of oil in walnuts. And did you know that Salvador Monde is the highest paid painting which cost 450.3 million US dollars. So guys, the next painting that I'm going to show you is a portrait of a man on a rancho. 
The medium uses red chalk on paper. It depicts the head of an elderly man in three quarter views. The head turns towards the viewer. And the last painting, or the next painting I'm going to show you, is the Virgin and the Child with Saint Anne. The medium he used is oil in woods, or oil on woods. It depicts Saint Anne with her daughter, Virgin Mary, and infant Jesus Christ, or Jesus. So guys, the next painting that I'm going to show you is the Madonna of the Yarn Window. The medium uses oil on walnuts. The body composition shows Christ's child twisting his body away from his mother's embrace. And the next painting that I'm going to show you is the baptism of Jesus. The medium uses oil on woods. The picture depicts the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist as recorded in the Bible. So guys, the next painting I'm going to show you is the lady in an airline or the lady with an airline. The medium use is oil and wood pan. The subject has been identified with reasonable certainty as Cecilia Galeriani, who was the mistress of Leonardo's employer. And the next painting that I'm going to show you is Leda and the Swan. The medium use is oil on paper. A picture or a standing picture of Leda almost naked with a swan. So guys, the next painting is St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was made on oil in walnut wood. The picture depicts St. John the Baptist in isolation. The figure appears to emerge from shadowy background. And the next painting is ta -da! Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is made in oil in poplar clay. Mona Lisa was the most well-known and most famous painting in the world. And guys, we have the Annunciation. The Annunciation is made of oil and tempera on panel. It is considered as one of the first major artwork of Da Vinci. And lastly, we have the Last Supper. The Last Supper is specifically portrayed the reaction of each apostles when Jesus said one of them will betray him. So guys, that was the painting of Leonardo da Vinci, the most famous Leonardo da Vinci, the epitome of Renaissance man. Hi guys, as you can see, we are here in the Renaissance right now. As you can see, I have no footwear. I didn't wear footwear so that I can experience the true essence of the Renaissance. Our first statue is David. It is a bronze statue. David is generally uncircumcised, which is common for male nudes in Italian Renaissance art. Our second statue is the equestrian statue of Gattamelata. It is a bronze statue and is one of the great works of Donatello while in Padua. Gattamelata, which means honeyed cat. Our next statue is the penitent Magdalene. It is made out of marble and it is probably commissioned for the baptistry of Florence. Our next statue is Saint George. It is a marble statue and is carved for the Guild of Armorers and Sword Makers in Florence. Our next statue is Zucone. It is a marble statue. It is commissioned for the bell tower of the cathedral in Florence, Italy. And our next statue is St. George Killing the Dragon. It is a marble relief. It is the, one of the first examples of a long series of scenes in which the artist used painting and drawing to a relief in marble. Our next statue is Judith and the Hall of Ferns. It is a bronze statue. It depicts the assassination of Assyrian general Hall of Ferns by Judith. And our next statue is Altar in the Basilica 
of Saint Anthony de Padua. It is a bronze crucifix. It is a famous work in Basilica of Tuscan sculptor Donatello. Our next statue is Saint Mark. It is a marble statue. It is notable for its detailed realism, evidence of the artist's skill. The next one is the Feast of Hera. It is a bronze statue and is Donatello's earliest relief sculpture and his first bronze relief. Our next sculpture is named Cantoria. It is a marble piece. The piece was part of a plan that was intended to beautify the interior of Dumo. Our last sculpture is named Amor Atis. It is a bronze statue. In Greek mythology, Atis was a shepherd of the Phrygian town, Selene. So guys, those are the notable works of Donatello. Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you the artworks of Raphael. But before I show you his artworks, Raphael was an Italian painter and architect of high renaissance. His work is admired because of its clarity of form, ease of composition, and his visual achievement of Neoplatonic ideal of human grandeur. So the first painting that I'm going to show you is the School of Athens. This is a fresco painting. So this picture, this painting, represents all the greatest mathematicians, scientists, and philosophers gathered together, sharing their ideas and learning from each other. So next is La Fornarina. So the girl in this painting is identified as Margarita Lotte, Raphael's Roman lover. So next is the Transfiguration. This is a tempera on wood painting. And according to Giorgio Vasari, this painting is the most beautiful, the most divine work of Raphael. So next is this is the Madonna. This is in an oil on canvas painting. And um, in Germany, this painting is the mo is most influential because it sparks a debate between art and religion. So the next painting is the marriage of the Virgin. This is an oil on round-headed panel type of painting. So Raphael intended the beauty of this painting as an abstract form of a geometrical representation. So the next painting is the La Belle Hardinaire. This is an oil on panel painting and Raphael's use of contrasting light and darkness color in the informal pose represents Da Vinci's, da Vinci's influence on him. So guys, this is the Despitation of the Holy Sacrament. This painting is a type of fresco painting and Raphael created this spanning the scenes of both heaven and earth. As you can see there, there's a representation of heaven and earth. And this is the Triumph of Galatea. And this is also a fresco painting. And um, the story of this um, illustrates the story from the poet Theocritus. Um, so this is the Three Graces painting. This is an oil and panel painting. And um, this is Raphael's first time depicting the nude female um, bodies in front and back views. And this is the self-portrait of Raphael himself. Um, this is also an oil panel painting. And um, he painted this painting between years 1504 and 
06, so it took him more than two years to paint this painting. So this is self portrait. This is his face. Um, so this is Pieta. This is an island panel painting. This picture represents the relationship between man and God through the sanctification of Christ. So, this painting is the last painting that I'm going to show you. This is entitled The Last Judgment. Um, this is an oil and panel painting. And um, this painting represents the, influ the influence exerted on the low countries by the high renaissance. So guys, those are the work some of the works of the man the myth the legend Raphael um, hope you like this um, thanks Renaissance was a time of rebirth rebirth of thoughts arts science, religion, and politics. Many artists, thinkers, and writers have contributed to the Renaissance, creating new thoughts and presenting their thoughts to the world. The contributions made by these people were not only important to the Renaissance, but to us as well. Renaissance affects us to this day. The, the legacy, legacy of Renaissance. Of Renaissance.